partners, I'm Honda Pro Jason. Today I'm going to walk you guys all around the 2017 Honda Ridgeline. I'm going to show you what the stereo can do. I'm going to show you what this vehicle can do off-road. I'm going to explain the towing capacities. I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks and we're definitely going to have some fun. Let me first start by saying this is the second generation Honda Ridgeline. It is completely redone and it's pretty awesome. I mean, just, just look at it. It looks amazing. And what Honda did is Honda kept a lot of the things that all you guys loved about the Ridgeline and updated all the rest to make it awesome. So starting here, check these out. These are accessory wheels, 18 inch. They're awesome. The tires that come with are especially designed for the vehicle. And a lot of you guys have been talking to me about, well, why is there so much wheel well here and in the back? Well, in a truck, you need this for payload, especially in the back. Payload's gonna push that down. By the way, payload, over 1,500 pounds. It's gonna push that down and you need that room. Come around to the front. You have LED DRLs up front, projector cell headlights, some are LEDs in certain models. You can get fog lights in certain models right down here. This is an accessory grill. It's like a carbon fiber look. It looks really, really cool. A lot of your sensing technologies are gonna be buried right inside this little H right here. Coming around to the side, you guys all know I love these mirrors. Why? Because you can fold them forward and backward. Smart key access with remote start. Press and hold, release, lights will flash, car's gonna start right off. To put the windows down, press and hold the buttons twice, all the windows go right down. Sunroof opens up. And a lot of people don't know this, but there's a hidden key inside here. Let me show you how it works. This gets unlatched, that goes down. You put this in the door, you turn it to the lock position, once again, and hold it. All the windows will go back up and the sunroof will go ahead and shut. How cool is that? When it comes to filling up the tank, this is kind of cool, check this out. It's, come on over here, it's capless. So there's no need to unscrew the cap. There's no worry about the cap is loose light anymore. You just stick the nozzle right in there and fill it right up. Check out the back. This is where the new Ridgeline really shines. Opens up down. Opens up to the side. There is a new composite floor. Let me take this accessory cover up here. Show you guys all the room we got inside here. Four by eight sheet of plywood, it'll fit in here. Right between those really small wheel wells, that plywood will stack all the way up. I go through the payload and the towing in just a little bit. You guys wanted a bigger in-bed trunk? You got it. Great for tailgating. There's a drain in the bottom. Excuse me a moment. There's a drain in the bottom. An 82 quart cooler fits in there perfectly now because the floor is now flat, not with a little arch, which is cool. These tie downs, tie downs down here. There's tie downs without this accessory top. There are tie downs up here and two more in the back. What's cool about those tie downs, each tie down is good to hold 350 pounds, each one. You guys do the math, but that's, that's a lot of pounds. And if you need to plug in anything, like a drill if you're on the job site, your iPhone if you're tailgating, it plugs in right there. What's neat about this is this is good. Let me show you that there. This is good for 150 watts of power if you're driving, or a total of 400 watts of power if you're parked and the car's running. It's a lot of power. I mean. This back of this truck does pretty much everything. New composite floor. To show the difference in the two composites from the old 2014 and the new 17, they have this little gardening tool. I don't garden, so I don't really know what it's called. But you can obviously, you guys can see here, there's some scratches. I'm gonna make some more here. Checked it out. It scratches very, very easily without much force. Coming over to the new bed, check this out. Nothing. Rocking. 
Let's talk about accessories. The new truck's available with a front wind guard. Fog lights are available. Side steps are available. Rain gutters. A lot of people use these if they smoke cigarettes. Come on in back, check this out. A rear seat cover branded with the uh, Ridgeline logo. And my favorite accessory for the 2017 Ridgeline is the tent. Ridgeline branded tent. Let's take a look inside. How nice is this here? I mean, it fits this awesome bed. This is an air mattress. So if you need to plug something in, come around the side here. This is cool. So this unzips. And then if you want, you can undo this where the power outlet is. And right now I'm actually plugging in my uh, DeWalt drill, but you can definitely plug in an air compressor right here and fill up your mattress. And everything has a cutout. So there's a cutout for the in-bed trunk. There is a secret cutout. This is a really cool little trick here. This little bag here, this is specially designed to fit the key. Now, what's the big deal? Why would the key go in here in this, instead of somewhere else in the truck? Well, if you put the key anywhere else in the truck, someone could try to get in the truck while you're sleeping and steal all your stuff. But if it's back here, it's far enough out of the proximity where the front doors stay locked. The new Ridgeline is a unibody. It's not a body on frame. And one of the reasons, a couple of the reasons Honda did that is it give you guys much more room inside. So let me show you what I'm talking about. These seats now both go up like this and like this. And it's the only vehicle in its class that you can put a bicycle in it with the front wheel on. That's pretty cool. You can put these seats back down. There's plenty of room. As you guys know, I'm only 5'6", so I wonder where this cowboy hat, to give you an idea of how much room is really in this cab. It's huge. Back here, Honda put in some models, 2.5 amp chargers. There's two of them in this one. And there's another two chargers up front. I'm gonna show you guys that in a moment. Air conditioning vents in the back. Nice, big, deep pockets here. Center console opens up for two cup holders. And before I forget, one of the other reasons we went with a uh, unibody frame is for the independent multi-link suspension front and rear. The 2017 Ridgeline is not a pilot with the truck bed. It's so much more. They've re-engineered the front and rear suspension. And to talk more about the re-engineering, I have Craig from Honda R&D. Craig, come on in for a moment. Hey, good to see you. Dude, good to see you as well. Yeah, thanks. Um, I was hoping you can tell us a little bit more about what's changed between the pilot and what's become more ro robust. Robust? Well, I would say robust. But robust, way, yes, robust front and rear for the Ridgeline. So if you can start with the front for us. We sure can. You know, I'm going to give you kind of a, a, an idea of the driving force of the strength increase for the front itself. So as you're going through that urban type terrain, you hit a curb, a pothole, or something of that nature. The example over the front, the driving force, was the force that's driven into the tire here, which kind of directs the tire going backward. Okay. So what was required to get that 17% or our target for the 17% strength increase, we needed to change the bearing first as well as the hub. In my left hand, I have the Ridgeline hub. The size increased. In my right, we have the pilot. You can see here, we've got a little bit of a size increase. You can check that out. Oh, yeah. You guys can see this here. Pilot, Ridgeline. Pilot, Ridgeline. Perfect. All right, so taking that, uh, going from there to the actual the next stop, which would be the knuckle. The bearing, of course, is pressed into here. The knuckle, this is actually the pilot knuckle that we're, we're actually, that I have in my hand. This is an I-beam construction. You can kind of see how it I-beam if yeah. you took a cross section of that. This is actually heavier and not as strong. Check it out. Mm -hmm. It's pretty heavy, okay. Yeah, yeah. Still meets pilot's expectations Good. and customer's needs. For an SUV. So, that's right, for an SUV. Makes sense. So what do we do? We re-engineered this to be lighter and stronger. You can tell by the difference in style. Totally different casting. That's correct. It's a hollow cast. Okay. It's actually a box frame, which is able to handle all the different loads that would be, be actually transferred into this. And those are the two big changes that we needed. Or oh, you, you can feel, Craig, you can feel the difference between the two. Good. 
Yeah. Very cool. Not Very only nice. Visual, but actual by weight. Cool. Right. And that's uh, now these are just, we're just showing you a couple of the differences. That's right. Behind me there is or in front of me there is a whole table of stuff, but we want to concentrate on a couple of the key components. So going to the rear. And that's a good point. So what was required for us is we needed to actually change 50% of our components for our chassis to handle these tough truck type loads. 50% from the pilot. That's correct. It's pretty awesome. Of course, we took the goodness from the pilot and made this. Of course you did. All right, so let's think about the loads in the tire now. Okay. So thinking about max payload, the sky's the limit. You can carry from wherever, from River Rock that we had the rock drop. Yeah. That's course, some mulch, gravel, whatever the needs of that customer would be. Okay. Now the difference is because the weight is actually behind the rear suspension, the forces are actually being driven up now. That's the driving force that was required for us to change the rear suspension. Okay. Let me shove a couple of those key parts. Yeah, let me see. What do we have here? Yeah, great. Grab the knuckle on the hump assembly. All right, so kind of the same philosophy. We needed to do some internal changes. You can't see those, but what you can see is the thickness of the actual attachment to where the knuckle is. You know, goes. Come in a little closer. You guys have to see this. Come on, come on, close to us. Come on over. You can really see the difference. And this is going to be the ridge line. Correct. And this is going to be the pilot. Yeah, that's right. All Very right. cool. And Very additionally, cool. Additionally, what we needed to change here is a lot of internal components to help prevent for the water fording, which you're about to experience on the medium duty off road course. Okay, cool. All right. And finally, dampeners, right? Yes, those are the dampeners. Cool. All right. What do you think? Which one can you compare? You think? This is the ridge line. That's right. And this is the pilot. Good eyes. Cool. So if you want to hold the pilot, you sure. can, I can kind of show the differences of the sure. side by side. So the big difference that we have, it's hard to see, but so actually. So if I can hold my baby. Oh, that's right. <laughs> The thickness of the tube increased. Oh, to yeah. To handle that. Okay. As we walk up through, we also change from a hard plastic to the metal. Now, both front and rear, that was required to help handle the loads that will be, the bumps that will be engaged at that max payload capacity. Okay. So those are the significant changes that we, uh, that was required. That's awesome. Right. Craig, thank you so much. Appreciate thank it. You My so pleasure. Much. Thanks. Is the 2017 Honda Ridgeline off-road capable? Specially designed 18-inch tires an 8-inch ground clearance, torque vectoring, I say it is, but let's find out. Now inside the new Ridgeline, as you guys can see, if you look across the dashboard here, it looks very similar to the new Pilot, which is awesome. Again, still wearing my hat here so you can see how much room is inside. This has the most room of any truck in its segment, and it's by far the most comfortable of any truck in its segment. Now looking across, the first thing you guys are going to see is this 8-inch screen, very similar to what the Pilot has. And if you guys have an iPhone or an Android device, this is uh, Android based, but you can use it with an iPhone, an Android, or Windows. All you have to do is plug in your phone to the front USB. You'll see where it says Smart Apple, uh, Apple CarPlay right here. Give that a press. And now this essentially is your phone. You have your phone calls, your music, your maps. If you don't want to use the Android maps by uh, Garmin, the Garmin maps inside, go ahead and pick the Google Maps. And you can go around and use Google Maps, which is cool, right from your phone. You have your messages, your music. If you have more music, you have it here. And then what everyone wants to do is listen to audio when you're driving. So what you can do with the audio is you can choose FM, AM, Sirius, USB, uh, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay. And all of this music can be played in the car or in the truck bed. The in-bed speaker system works with six exciters. The exciters are located two in each of the panels. This is one of the panels, and these are exciters. Basically what an exciter is, is it's the magnet part of the speaker, and Honda uses the whole panel as the woofer. Now let's hear what the truck bed audio system sounds like. Wait, who turned that on? I did. Lauren Fix, get over here Lauren Fix, how are you? Good, how are you? How did you turn that on? Apple Watch. She turned the music on in the trunk yeah. with her Apple Watch. Now, you can also play music through Apple CarPlay. You can play music through any of the sources, right? Yep. 
What about if you had a TV, you could play it, you could plug it right in and use it? Yeah, you can do a television, you could do any sort of video. If you got a remote satellite dish, why not? If you're gonna, if you're gonna tailgate, tailgate. What a cool tailgate. Now, the car is in the ignition mode, but let me shut the car off and show you what it does. Hang on. The car shut off. Music still plays. Now, if the battery happens to run down to a certain level that it might not start, it'll automatically shut itself off and give you a warning so you don't overdo your battery. How cool is that? That's cool. I love awesome. it. Awesome. Keep the music playing. I want to dance. I'm gonna, oh, well, I was going to switch songs for you. You want to dance to a slow yeah. song? I don't know if I want to dance to a slow song. I want to dance to anything. Go find, something good. find something good for me to dance to. What is this? Oh, Lauren. <laughs> well, that's a brief demonstration of how this truck bed audio system works in this 2017 on Ridgeline. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lauren. Thank you. You can follow me at Lauren Fix on Twitter. And also, if you want to hook this system up to your Wi-Fi, you can actually do a browser. You, of course, have a calculator, and eventually there'll be downloads with a browser and a strong internet connection, which I don't have. You can go ahead and browse Google. You guys can watch videos, YouTube videos, Honda Pro Jason YouTube videos while you're parked in your Ridgeline. How cool would that be? Coming down, you guys will see the tri-zone climate control. So you have their driver, passenger, and rear for the rear passengers. Your heated seats, your power outlet. And again, there's one USB that's used for CarPlay and Android Auto. Inside this compartment here, again, just like the Pilot, you can eat on this. You can use this as a little table. This slides open. There is another USB with an aux jack in there. Another power outlet. A nice slidable tray that slides back and forth. And remember, you also have two USBs that are 2.5 amps on the bottom. Coming across to the front here, let me show you this. Up in this area here, you guys are going to be able to see all the modes you can change. Normal, snow, mud, sand. Can the new 2017 Ridgeline tow or haul? Yes, it can. Let me show you how much. Come on over this way. Towing capacities, capabilities of the new Ridgeline. Max towing two-wheel drive, 3,500 pounds. All-wheel drive, 5,000 pounds, along with a tongue weight of 420 pounds and 600 pounds. So here are some of the things. I mean, jet skis are like 2,500 pounds. A boat's 3,500 pounds. And one of the reasons why the new Ridgeline doesn't tow more than 5,000 pounds is most people in the mid-size market, they don't need that. In fact, 3% or less even tow with a mid-size truck. So come on over here. Let me talk about payload rating for a moment because this is how much payload you can actually put it in, where most people are going to be using it. 1,584 pounds of payload. How much is that? What's well, a lot. Let me show you right over here. This here. These bags, 40 bags of mulch, 1,600 pounds of payload is here. So all of this payload will fit in the Ridgeline and with the in-bed speaker system, those exciters, you can still listen to the music outside with the payload inside. How cool is that? Powering the new Ridgeline is a 3.5 liter, 280 horsepower with 262 foot-pounds of torque engine, IV Tech, all the power goes to either the front wheels or all wheels, and the truck also has torque vectoring. Torque vectoring. What that does is when you're coming around a turn, it'll actually send power to whatever wheel needs it, and a lot of trucks will do is it'll actually reduce power to keep you on the road. The Honda actually adds the power. And another fun fact, the differential in this truck, it's the only one that's ECU controlled in the whole segment. How cool was that? We went off-roading, we looked at the inside and the outside. We listened to the speakers. Thank you, Lauren Fix, by the way, for that. That was super cool. We've done pretty much everything. I think I've shown you the accessories. I've shown you pretty much everything on the new Ridgeline. A huge thanks to everyone at Honda. You guys have been outstanding. And I hope you guys will go check out the new Ridgeline. Any questions on the Ridgeline, leave them in the comments below. And as always, from San Antonio, Texas, I'm the Honda Pro, and now you're in the know.